Dr. D. Sangeeta is currently a senior lecturer at the Department of Chemistry, Anna University, Chennai. She has completed her PhD in the field of polymer chemistry from the University of Madras in the year 2000 and has teaching and research experience of more than 10 years. Her research interests are in the following fields. Fuel cells for clean energy, functional membranes for desalination, and polymers for biomedical applications. She has published more than 20 research articles in national and international journals and has more than 40 research articles in national and international proceedings. Presently, she is guiding six research scholars for their doctoral degree. Welcome to the uh, UGC lecture series for the subject on polymer science. We have been uh, dealing with the unit 2 wherein we are uh, talking about the synthesis of different polymers. There are various synthetic procedures that are available. We begin in the first uh, lecture with the free radical polymerization mechanism and we have also elaborately seen about the kinetics of this free radical polymerization. This particular episode lecture 3 also we will be continuing with the free radical polymerization and extensively in today's lecture we will be covering about the chain transfer reaction. Basically in the earlier lectures we have seen there are uh, important steps that are available in the free radical polymerization mechanism. The very first step is your initiation. This is followed by the propagation step and then finally, the termination. Under the termination you have importantly three methods of termination. The first method is your coupling otherwise called as dimerization process. The second method is disproportionation and the third type of termination possible in a free radical polymerization is all about this chain transfer. How is this termination of the growing polymer taking place with respect to this methodology that is chain transfer mechanism is all about we are going to see today. Here we will look into the basic information about the chain transfer reaction, how it is taking place, what is the role of the solvent in making this termination possible by chain transfer method and how is this reflected or happening in the actual polymerization system that is how the chain transfer is happening in the polymerization reactor whether it is getting transferred to the monomer or a growing polymer or a solvent or any other substance or components that could be present in the reaction vessel can be responsible for this chain transfer arrangement to be possible in as a termination step in the process. We will have a detailed account about this and then we will also be talking about what is a chain transfer constant. We will have to define about this and there is a specific procedure to determine this chain transfer constant. We will look into that also and we will be touching upon the role of an inhibitor in such a polymerization process. How does the inhibitor take up its role in terminating the uh, process that is your free radical polymerization process. And then finally, we will be doing with the very famously uh, called effect which is nothing but the Trom's Droff effect which is uh, an important effect as far as the bulk polymerization methods are concerned where you do not have an impure system, where you do not have a solvent medium, how this explosion is possible due to this uh, Trom's Droff effect will be seen in detail. Now, let us move on to the chain transfer reaction which is nothing but the third method of the termination step with that can happen in the free radical polymerization mechanism. Earlier it was understood from this particular experiment when styrene which is a simple monomer was tried to be polymerized with a very small quantity or a small amount of BPO initiator. BPO is nothing but benzyl peroxide. Uh, generally very commonly used initiators are BPO, benzyl peroxide and AIBN that we have seen in the earlier classes isobis nitri or this BPO are the most commonly used initiators. In this case the monomer styrene is polymerized by making use of BPO initiator in a medium of CCl4 carbon tetrachloride. So, the solvent medium is taken to be the carbon tetrachloride and a small amount of the initiator is added into the system and you have the monomer styrene present. When the polymer is formed in this reaction, when the product was analyzed, it was found to contain chlorine. That means, the styrene which should have become a simple polystyrene which is basically a hydrocarbon polymer 
still contains some amount of chlorine content that is present along with the polymer chain. This was known when the product was analyzed. Then it speculated where is this chlorine coming from? Actually, we do not have uh, the reaction which is having the chlorine in the monomer, but this chlorine should have uh, gone into the polymer structure only from the solvent. Then it was understood there is a chain transfer reaction happening with the help of the solvent molecules. The chlorine should have definitely come from the CCL4 content that is your solvent. This is possible only by the abstraction of the chlorine by the coli growing polymer. When there is a growing polymer that is getting propagated in the polymerization reaction is going to abstract the chlorine atom of the CCL4 solvent molecule such a product with the content of the chlorine should have been formed. This is the only possibility. So, just having a look into the deeper uh, part of this mechanism how this is happening. You have the basic molecule CH2, CH and a benzene ring over here which is nothing but your styrene monomer in CCL4 with the BPO initiator forms a growing polymer chain like this. So, BPO is breaking down as PH, COO, CH2, CH dot and your benzene ring. So, this free radical position is transferred from the initiator BPO to the monomer unit over here. When this joins with further more and more monomers, the growing polymer chain is going to look like this with the end carbon which is available in the growing polymer chain containing this free radical position. When you have the CCL4 in the reaction system as a solvent medium where the reaction is actually taking place, this also can split into CCL3 dot and your Cl dot and this Cl free radical can go and join with this position which is available in the growing polymer chain to form a new bond a sigma bond between the carbon of this growing chain and this chlorine atom which comes from the solvent molecule CCL4. So, this forms a terminated step because there is no further radical position that is available in the growing polymer chain. The active uh, point or the active center is gone and the chain is getting terminated. So, such a possible termination which is occurring for the growing polymer chain because of the abstraction of the chlorine atom that is coming from the solvent molecule the reaction you call it as a chain transfer reaction this forms the termination step. Further the other half of the solvent molecule because the Cl dot has come and joined over here in this structure the other part is your CCL3 dot and this free radical also can join with another monomer to initiate a new polymerization reaction or it can simply go and attach to a growing polymer chain and then terminate the reaction. So, this can act as an initiator or a terminator depending on the molecules that comes in contact with it in the polymerization reactor to form different types of different polymers with different Cl or chlorine content in the polymer chain. So, this is a mechanism where we have understood the abstraction of the chlorine chlorine by the growing polymer chain is happening in such a chain transfer reaction. Very similar to the CCL4 there are various other reagents that can also be used in a very similar way. They may include CBr4, CHCl3 your chloroform, Cl, CH2, CH2, Cl, Cl2, CH, CH, Cl2 wherein you can see the presence of chlorine or bromine in all these molecules and in this case it is ROH, OH can form a radical and then go and form a chain transfer. Any alcohol can also be a chain transfer agent or RSH. These are all the various groups or reagents which can be similarly used for terminating a polymerization reaction by chain transfer methodology. In general, the solvents have different ability for the chain transfer. The most commonly used solvents like this can be expressed in this form wherein you can see the chain transfer ability getting reduced from the first structure to the last benzene structure. This again depends the ability of the chain transfer of the solvent again depends on the groups that are attached to the styrene or your benzene ring over here. So, what happens is here you do not have any you have the least label hydrogen present in this structure whereas, when you have the methyl substitution you have a greater label hydrogen present when you have an ethyl the percentage is increased. When you have the propyl then again the label 
hydrogen that is present or associated with the solvent molecule is again increased. So, we can understand that the benzene or the C6H6 molecule has the least chain transfer ability when compared to these four structures because of the presence of the least labile hydrogen. Whereas, when you have more and more labile hydrogen when you pass from the right side to the left side the chain transfer ability also increases with the increase in the number of labile hydrogen present in your structure of the solvent molecule. In general in the industry for an industrial polymerization a chain transfer reagent is deliberately added it is added purposefully why because in order to reduce the molecular weight of the polymer. This is an important process as far as a rubber industry basically is concerned. You are more concerned about the molecular weight, average molecular weight of the different polymer chains that are formed during the reaction. In an industry, you have to have a polymer with different polymer chains within the same sample with an uniform molecular weight as well as you are interested in reducing the molecular weight in certain structures, in certain polymers, especially the rubber industries. This is because uh, you have to because of this you can have a chain transfer reagent that is deliberately added into the polymerization system in order to terminate or bring down the molecular weight of a growing polymer chain and then you have a low molecular weight uh, product samples that are formed ultimately. There are reasons for this which will be explained in the later slide. The most important industry as I have already told you is in the manufacture of rubber materials. The very commonly used chain transfer reagents in a rubber industry would include diisopropyl xanthate, disulfite and the mercaptans. These are the two important groups of chain transfer reagents which are deliberately added into the rubber uh, preparation systems. What really happens is it reduces or decreases the molecular weight and hence the processing temperature is lowered. Whenever you have manufactured a particular polymer when they are subjected to a processing temperature because when they will have to be converted to a useful product they should undergo a processing technique like calendaring, extrusion or any kind of thermoforming and so on. So, what happens during this conversion or the processing stage these polymer molecules are subjected to high temperature. When they are subjected to high temperature the processing temperature that is required to process them to a particular shape and size increases with the increase in the molecular weight. Hence, when you have large molecular weight polymer samples the processing temperature that should be acquired during their processing time is higher when compared to the polymer same polymer samples with the lower molecular weight and this is very much true in the case of rubbery materials. Hence, in order to reduce the molecular weight of the polymer samples you can have these uh, chain transfer reagents that are added into the polymerization system in order to bring down the molecular weight of the polymer. So, what happens is high molecular weight products will have have to have a high processing temperature. This ultimately increases the in turn increases the cost of the processing also because when you go to higher energy higher uh, temperature higher cost is required and another additional problem due to this is the decomposition may also occur because of high temperature there are uh, possibilities where especially the rubbery materials when they are subjected to higher temperature which is required to modify the properties or pro uh, processing of the rubbery materials will also go and degrade or the uh, or decompose some portions of the rubbery materials. Hence, because of this reason in an industry always deliberately a chain transfer reagent is added in order to bring the molecular weight uh, down. Now, let us have a short break before going into the uh, actual mechanism how a chain transfer reagent reacts to bring down the uh, molecular weight of the polymer. Welcome back after the short break. Having seen the importance of trans, uh, chain transfer agent in the rubber industry, now let us look into the effect or how the mechanism is taking place when such a reagent is added into the polymerization system. Let us take the case of butadiene, polybutadiene polymer. So, in this case, this is your diisopropyl xanthate disulfate, which is going to 
break down and then get joined with this molecule that is your CH2, CH double bond CH, CH2. This is your butadiene structure. This is a growing polymer chain because at the end you have a radical position. When this butadiene polymer which is forming the polybutadiene rubbery material during its polymerization stage when you have a growing chain available this chain transfer agent that is your diisopropyl xanthate disulfate when it goes and attacks it it forms a bond over here like this a rubbery material is over here CH2 CH double bond CH CH2 it continues and this is your half the portion of your chain transfer reagent. Now this is broken down at the SS bond it forms two radical positions and this comes and joins over here to form a sigma bond between the C and the S over here. So, when this happens this growing polymer chain loses its capacity to further join with more and more butadiene monomers, but it ends up with the chain transfer reagent over here and the further polymerization is stopped here. The second part are the other portion of the chain transfer reagent can further initiate another reaction by joining with another new monomer molecule or it can simply go and attach itself like this to terminate the polymerization of a growing polymer. So, this is how the mechanism is working out uh, to bring down the molecular weight of the polybutadiene rubbery material in the rubber manufacturing industry. Very similar to this the mercaptans or another important class uh, uh, chain transfer reagents which does the same job. You can see here you have the R chain and your CH2 CHX let this be your monomer growing polymer chain and this is your site active center and this RSH is your mercaptan which is nothing but your chain transfer reagent. It breaks down as RS dot and H dot. The H dot combines to this carbon to form a terminated polymer like this H2 is formed and further this particular half the portion joins again with another monomer to either initiate a polymerization reaction or joins with a growing polymer chain and then stops or terminates the polymerization reaction over there. Now having seen the actual mechanism how the chain transfer reagent goes and terminates the growing polymer chains growth. Now let us move on to the polymerization system the actual polymerization reactor what is taking place. Now this chain transfer should be possible due to the presence of various components in your polymerization reactor. You have the monomer, you have the growing polymer, you have the solvent, you may have any other contaminants or any other agents that could be present along with your polymerization reactor contents and they all can be responsible for such a chain transfer to occur. Let us see one after the other how they are getting affected. The first one is the chain transfer to initiator and then chain transfer to a polymer and then to a monomer and then to a solvent. Let us see all this. In the case of chain transfer to an initiator, the chain transfer to the initiator even if it is going to occur will be very less. This is because the concentration of the initiator is taken to be very very less when compared to the concentration of your monomer or whatever it is. This is going to be less than 0.5 percent and its concentration further decreases over a period of time that is when the polymerization reaction time is going on the initiator concentration is going to further come down. So, the possibility of chain transfer to the initiator compared to other components is going to be lesser however, it cannot be neglected especially with respect to hydroperoxide. Hydroperoxides are a, a important group of initiators used for free radical polymerization reactions and you can see here the ROOH your hydroperoxide combines with your growing polymer chain this is your growing polymer chain with an active center and then this ROO dot is broken down and you have the H dot combining to the growing polymer chain to terminate the growth of the polymer because it forms a CH2 over here. When it enters into the chain propagation ROO dot initiates a monomer goes and attacks a monomer and then this radical position is shifted from this place to the carbon right end carbon and this becomes a growing polymer chain. This is how it is transferred and this is nothing but a chain transfer reaction and this is how a chain transfer to the initiator can take place in the polymerization system. 
The second one is chain transfer to the monomer. It should be possible for the monomer also to take play to uh, enter into this system. Chain transfer to the monomer cannot be neglected because the monomer concentration is very high initially and with time of course, it decreases especially with respect to the monomer that contains a labile hydrogen atoms. As we have seen this point at the earlier uh, stage itself, those monomers which contain the labile hydrogen atoms even though if its concentration is going to be reduced over a period of time is to be considered important for the chain transfer mechanisms because such monomers alone can facilitate the chain transfer reaction in the system. Some of the examples of such monomers are given over here when the monomer structures are going to contain an SH or a CH2 or a OH substitution these monomers are containing more labile hydrogen atoms and they are subjected to the chain transfer actions very easily. The third possibility is the chain transfer to the polymer itself. This is slightly different from the other two initiator and your monomer. What happens in this case is if a chain transfer occurs by the abstraction of the H plus or a proton from a linear polymer chain backbone, it will lead to branching. That means, when the abstraction is going to take place on the H plus of the main chain of your uh, polymer chain, this will enter or with will ultimately lead to a branching that could be developed in the polymer. That is why you have various forms of polyethylene. For example, you have low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene, linear low density polyethylene, all these different forms of polyethylenes which are branched, which are uh, cross linked, which are linear, they are due to the presence of such chain transfers which can occur in the main polymer chain itself. So, such a chain transfer to the polymer chain will ultimately result in either branching or if the same is going to contain some pendant groups then it will result in the cross linking. Hence, you can end up with a branched polymer or cross linked polymer depending on that you have low density and high density polyethylene polymers that could be formed. The best example is the LDPE low density polyethylene which is formed by this particular chain transfer method that is the abstraction of proton from backbone of the polymer chain happens. So, ethylene leads to the branched polymer rather than the linear chain polymer. So, when you have the branched polymer it is nothing but your low density polyethylene. When you have a linear chain without cha chain transfer abstraction that is taking place in the main chain you will end up with a highly linear high density polyethylene. Similarly, you can achieve LDPE high molecular weight polyethylene, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene UH, MWP and so on. There are varieties and categories of polyethylenes that are available in the market. The fourth type of chain transfer that are possible is into the solvent molecule. Here the solvent concentration is supposed to be very high because the medium itself is the solvent where the solution polymerization is taking place for your uh, monomer getting converted to the polymer. Now, the chain transfer takes place with solvent that contains the labile hydrogen particularly. So, even with inert solvent like benzene, small percentage of chain transfer can occur always. Now, let us talk about the chain transfer constant. What is this? If the chain termination occurs only by the chain transfer method, then you call that reaction as the chain transfer to the solvent termination process. In this case as we have seen in the earlier classes mu is equal to dp that is your kinetic chain length is equal to degree of polymerization because degree of polymerization is the number of monomer molecules mo number of uh, monomer units that are present in the ultimate product polymer whereas kinetic chain length is that many number of monomer units that are present in the growing polymer chain just before the termination is occurring. Hence, in this chain transfer uh, concept, this kinetic chain length is simply equal to the degree of polymerization. And when you have 1 by uh, uh, mu, which is also equal to 1 by dp, which is also equal to rt by rp, where rt represents the rate of polymerization of termination step and rp is your propagation rate. This can further be equated to ktr m dot concentration and zh concentration, where ktr is your rate constant for the termination step and Kp is a rate constant for the propagation step. 
m dot is a growing polymer chain concentration this multiplied by the concentration of the chain transfer agent in the termination step and for the propagation it again depends on the monomers concentration. This can be further written as 1 by dp is equal to ktr by kp your chain transfer agent concentration divided by the concentration of the monomer because in the numerator and denominator you have the growing polymer chains concentration both of them gets cancelled and further this can also be written as c is at h is at h concentration by m concentration where c is at h is equal to the ratio of k t r and k p. Therefore, for the polymerization reaction which occurs only through chain transfer we can simply write the reciprocal of your degree of polymerization is equal to C i initiator concentration pi monomer concentration with respect to the initiator where C i is the constant that depends on the initiator plus C m with respect to the monomer because in numerator and denominator you have the monomer concentration getting cancelled with each other and you have only the constant term and then in the third part you have the solvents uh, association where you have C s as the chain transfer constant multiplied by solvent concentration by monomer concentration and then finally, you have the chain transfer agents constant C is at H is at H concentration by M concentration. This is the overall expression of uh, the DP with respect to initiator, monomer, your solvent and your chain transfer agent. How do we determine this chain transfer constant? There is a simple procedure to determine this CTC value. Step 1 is you have to select a suitable initiator to which no train chain transfer can occur. After selecting such an initiator select a simple monomer which again will not undergo any chain transfer that is the monomer should not contain any labile atoms into it. After selecting the initiator and monomer we have to see the solvent is also a very pure solvent so that there is no chain transfer reaction or reagent that are available in the solvent as impurities which may affect the reaction. After choosing a suitable initiator, a suitable monomer and purifying the solvent you conduct the polymerization reaction. When you do this procedure different concentrations of the monomers and solvents are taken and the polymerization reaction is allowed to be carried out. By taking a known weight of the initiator and conducting all the uh, reactions at a particular temperature T. After doing this in each case you will have different products that are obtained. You analyze the molecular weight of the polymer and this is determined by the gel permeation chromatographic technique which is based on the size exclusion principle because when the size of the polymer is uh, more the molecular weight is more based on this principle you can directly obtain the molecular weight or the degree of polymerization of the obtained polymer. After getting this data from these data we can find out the CTC simply by making use of this equation 1 by dp bar is equal to 1 by dp naught plus C s s concentration by monomer concentration. This equation appears to be uh, similar to your y is equal to mx plus c equation. Hence you have a straight line when you have graph or a plot between 1 by dp and your s by m concentration. There is a slope available for this straight line and you have an intercept which is equal to 1 by dp naught. Now if 4 different solvents are used for the same polymer, same uh, initiator, same monomer is available, same temperature is maintained but only the solvent is changed. For example, let me say cumin, toluene, ethyl benzene and benzene 4 different solvents are taken. Now if we are going to plot this we can see that the intercepts remains the same in all the cases cumin, ethyl benzene, toluene and benzene intercepts remains the same whereas the slope of the straight line that is obtained when the reaction is carried out in the identical condition with the change in the solvent alone will be different. This slope is nothing but the one which is directly contributing or influencing your chain transfer constant value. So as a summary today what we have seen is all about chain transfer reactions. We have uh, especially uh, talked about the role of the solvent and we have also talked about the chain transfer how it is taking place 
uh, in the polymerization reaction bath where you have monomer, polymer, initiator and solvent. How do they play a role in doing this chain transfer reaction we have seen? Here are few questions. What is the result of a chain transfer to polymer? Given example, how do you account for the chain transfer ability of a solvent? Explain the importance of chain transfer agents in rubber industry. Expand the terms DPPH, AIBN, LLDPE and UHMWPE. Thank you. Thank you.